So this is an overview of calculus, our first lesson. Question here, what is calculus? No? Share your subject or your course here. When you talk of change, you talk of motion. Motion like, for instance, a car traveling. So when a car is traveling, we normally measure what, guys? What we measure, distance travel, distance. right? Yes, Paul. Another thing that we can measure about a car moving, it's velocity. Is that correct? In pre-calculus, what you can get about the velocity of a car is that average velocity from the starting to, normally, from the starting to the end. So, okay? So, meaning, velocities are changing, no? Depending on the position or depending on the location because there are locations where there is a traffic jam and so on. And there is also location or road where there is a smooth flow of traffic, okay? So that's why velocity is changing. But in calculus, uh, velocity can be obtained at, at any position, at instant. So unlike in, in pre-calculus, as I said, what, can we, what we can measure, average velocity, but in calculus, you can measure or you can determine the velocity of, let's say, the car at any instant or at any position, exact location, okay? The moment it reaches this, this at instant, this position, what is the velocity at that instant? So when you talk of change, so the right mathematics is calculus. There are so many quantities changing, no? So in the real world, so we have quantities about marginal cost, inflation. So even, even in geometry, areas are changing. So, and many more, okay? Profit changing. So when you talk of change, you talk of motion, the right mathematics is calculus. That's why Calculus is defined as the mathematical study of a continuous change in motion. And when you say change in motion, it is related to limits. In order to deal, to deal with this change and this motion, we will be talking about limits. That is limit of a function and limit of an area. So the reason perhaps why there are books that define calculus as the study of limits. Okay, guys? Who are the people behind calculus? There are so many people behind calculus. But there were two people who discovered calculus. Mm. The first one. And then, of course, improved by many mathematicians. Mm. So the first one we have in the list, Isaac Newton. He was an English. And then the second one, Gottfried Wilhelm Leibniz. He was a German. These two people discovered or invented calculus independently, okay? And so Sir Isaac Newton supported by the people of England while Leibniz um, supported by most countries in Europe. So if you're interested with their biographies, you can Google Isaac Newton's biography together with Leibniz, no? I think for the story of Leibniz, um, um, it's a sad story for him when he died. You, you see his biography and you will know why. Why it is so sad um, about his death no? when he died. Okay? Considering that Leibniz, one of those mathematicians, a person who, all, who knew almost all fields of knowledge during his time, which, which was impossible, no? Now, sa ating time ngayon, it is impossible in our time. Um, there are four major problems calculus is concerned. May mga book, uh, um, kinonsider lang yung dalawa because some are, are part also or related to the first one, yung other two. So we have the tangent line problem, velocity and acceleration problem. Velocity and acceleration problem related to tangent problem, yung behavior nila. Although, uh, iba lang yung approach, no? Yung isa geometric, the other one, we have ap applied. 
Then the third one, optimization problem, okay? But when we talk about optimization problem, that actually depends also on the concept of tangent line problem. So that's why two and three incorporated to tangent line problem by other books. No? So, and then the last one, the area problem. So these are the four major problems calculus is concerned. And these are the problems many mathematicians before were trying to solve. That's why they came up, uh, Sir Isaac Newton and got with Wilhelm Leibniz tried to come up with this calculus. No? Each of these problems involves the notion of limit. Calculus can be introduced by any of these problems. There are two branches of calculus. The first one we have differential calculus. The second one, integral calculus. Although possible also to divide calculus into three. The third one, vector calculus. But you can um, incorporate vector calculus in differential and integral if you want it in, as two branches. Uh, we can study differential and integral calculus or calculus um, as real valued calculus and also possible to be vector valued calculus. What's the difference, guys? So what's the difference between the two? So when you say real valued calculus, so if you want to talk about differential calculus and integral calculus as real valued calculus, inputs to the variables, real numbers, outputs expected real numbers also. The reason why real valued calculus. But it is also possible for the variables to have inputs, real numbers, but the outputs, not just real numbers, but possible to have directions. So these are vector values, no? So meaning for every set of inputs, you can, you, for variables, you can have vectors as values. So the reason why vector valid calculus. There are universities in other countries and also here in the Philippines, but seldom. So they have three calculus, no? Or in, in case there are two calculus only, but they touch also topic on vector calculus, okay? So, but in your case, you will be dealing with basic calculus only. And our concern is about what? So our concern is on real valued calculus, okay? We will not be dealing with vector valued calculus for basic calculus. Is that clear, guys? Guys, yes, so you do not have to worry if you can really get the, the whole picture, no? Because this is just an overview. We will be going to into detail of this, especially the mathematical part of the calculus, no? For history, you can read that because I myself mm, can't memorize mm, exactly the history of calculus, no? So I still have to go over with the uh, details, okay? Mm. So what is the difference between differential and integral calculus? So when we have for differential calculus, so we deal with the, we deal with the instantaneous rates of chains and slopes of curves. It also concerns with the study and evaluation and use of derivatives and differentials. Actually in differential calculus, the important tool is derivative and the process is different Okay, now in differential calculus, we can talk of velocity. So in your physics, once you discuss velocity, it will be related to derivative. In fact, instantaneous velocity is a derivative. Okay, a neutral name is the derivative. Velocity can be a slope of the tangent. And then velocity can be, I mean, derivative can be can be acceleration. So velocity, acceleration, slope of tangent line. Mm. These are just uh, specific names for the neutral name derivative. So which will be explained once we have derivative of a function. Now in terms of picture, this is the graph of what we mean by, by derivative. No? So given a function y equals f of x, and we assume that it is a continuous function. 
So looking at this graph, so this is the graph of y equals f of x, the blue one, the light blue. Now, if you are going to connect two points on this, so that line is called secant line. So let's say this point P has x and y coordinates, and this Q has x, sub, x plus delta x, y plus delta y coordinates. Now, our goal is to determine the slope of the tangent line at the point on this curve. So in order to come up with that, we need Q to move. So as Q moves along the curve and gets closer and closer to P, how, what happens to delta X? Delta X is getting smaller and smaller, approaching what? Zero. If you want your Q to approach P. So meaning, if you want this line to become, to reach its limiting position, and this is the limiting position of the second line, which is the tangent line. And that is where we are interested. We want to know the slope of this tangent line. And you recall in your analytic geometry, in order to determine the slope of the tangent la of the line, you need what, guys? Guys, what do you need in order to get the slope of, the, of a line? You need what, two guys? Points. Two points. So you, for the secant line, you can determine the slope. So, and that is y value, nung q, y plus delta y, and that is f of x plus delta x, yung pinaka y plus delta y niya, minus f of x, ito yung y, yan here, y plus delta y minus y, all over mm, what? The delta x. In delta x, in yung x plus delta x, minus x. So that is just delta x. This is a slope of secant line. But we are not really interested with that. What we are interested, slope of the tangent line at this point. But there is only one point, And we don't have any information about this line anymore. So we will not able to get the, what? The slope. Okay? So in order to get the slope, because you know only one point, you have to get it from the secant line. So since tangent line is the limiting position of this secant line, as Q moves towards P, or as delta X approaches zero, so what is happening is that you are getting the limiting value of the secant line. And the limiting value of this secant line, as delta X approaches zero, as this delta X approaches zero, is called the slope of the tangent line. Okay? Because this secant line will eventually mm, lip, uh, reach A, will eventually reach its limiting position. And once it reaches its limiting position, so it will become what? Tangent line. And meaning, you, want, you get the limit of the C, the slope of the second line. And that happens when delta X approaches zero. Okay? Remember when Q gets closer and closer, let's say the Q is now here, what happens to delta X? So delta X now is from this point to this point. Getting smaller, how much more? If your Q is very, very close to P, so what is now delta x? So very, very close to zero. You can do also the behavior, uh, you can also examine the behavior of this coming from the left and you will get the same what behavior, of course, no? Again, with the condition that y equals f of x it is a continuous function and um, the limit of this will exist. So for the limit of this tangent line, I mean for the slope of this tangent line to exist, and the slope of the tangent line is said to be the slope also of the curve at that point. So the slope of the curve at that point is also the slope of the tangent line at this point. P. And in neutral name, that slope actually is called the derivative. Geometrically, it is the slope of the tangent line. In physics, it might be velocity or acceleration. So if you have, let's say, distance function, and you get the rate of change of the distance function with respect to time, you will get what we call velocity. So meaning when you draw the graph of a, a distance function, let's say this is the graph, y, y equals f of x, the equation, but this time, for instance, s equals uh, in terms of time, no? The distance is in terms of time. 
So, and when you get the instantaneous rate of change of that velocity, that is the slope of the, mm, uh, what you call this, of the graph ng distance function mm, sa, ng tangent doon sa, sa point, specific point. Okay? So, again, velocity, slope of tangent line, acceleration, rate of change of, for instance, of profit with respect to time, marginal cost. So these are just neutral name, I mean the neutral name derivative. So they are just co slope. Actually, they will be just boiling down to, to what we call slope of tangent line and then the neutral name given to them, derivative. Okay? So, yeah. And the notation we use F prime of X or mm, derivative of Y with respect to X with this notation. We call this Leibniz uh, notation. So we have dy then in the denominator dx. But this is not considered quotient if you think of this as derivative. Although once you study differential, you can treat this as quotient of dy and dx. So after giving meanings to dy and dx separately. But for the meantime, it means just one symbol. If you mean it derivative. And that is how it looks like. So instead of m of tangent, slope of tangent, I now put it as f prime of x, the notation for derivative. So going back, so remember, slope of the tangent line is given by this formula, no? And the right side, which is the value of the slope of the tangent at any point. So after giving a special name, derivative to this uh, limit, or to the slope of the tangent. So we now have you know, this notation, f prime instead of m of tangent. So because again, it doesn't mean only um, interpreted as slope of tangent, possible that it is interpreted as what? As um, rate of change of distance with respect to time and so on. So if this limit exists, if you have a particular value of a, then this formula changes to f prime of a equals limit of f of x minus f of a all over x minus a as x approaches a. Because as x approaches a, so this is will event this will eventually going to be zero, no? Like delta x is going to be zero. Okay, so x minus a is actually delta x. Okay, but I know specifically what x is. So that is A, okay? Now, as delta X approaches zero, so this is now what? Approaching F of X. So this is now going to be F of X. Parang ito na yung so F of X minus F of A all over X minus A. If the limit exists. What about integral calculus? So by the way, D, this notation D over DX or this capital D with subscript X mean derivative operator. It's like sine. It operates on an angle. This operates on functions, this notation. Another um, a part ng calculus we call integral calculus. What about this branch? No? This branch deals with the study of the measure of the total net change of functions or quantities and areas of plane regions bounded by curves. So basically, no. But areas here later will be interpreted at the numerical value. So we'll have so many interpretations. It can be profit. It can interpret the number as profit in terms of, for instance, in terms of pesos or dollars. The area, the number, the numerical value can be interpreted as what? Because when you say graph of a function, then you will have an area under the graph. If the function now is, for instance, distance, so you can perhaps, uh, the value of the, of the area can represent the total distance traveled by a car. Because you have a graph of the distance function and the region under the graph can represent the total what? Distance traveled. So an area can be cost that uh, if you have a cost function and you draw the graph then you can have the area under that that uh, cost function will represent what 
will represent the the total cost okay so area mean doesn't mean really area no can be can possibly be other one other interpretation but basically area of the region so you, it is also possible to compute for the volume of a general solid using integral calculus so the important tool in integral calculus in order to compute for this area for instance under the graph of y equals f of x above the x-axis over the interval a b or if you want volume of a general solid so you can use this tool integral or anti-derivative specifically definite integral and the process integration or anti-differentiation you can read this anti-differentiation or anti pero dapat consistent ka kung anti-differentiation or anti-derivative ang pronunciation mo dapat ang mga pronunciation mo sa direction dimension yun, isolation what else inclination dapat ganun din ang mga pronunciation mo kung anti-derivative ka direction finance anti-differentiation isolation dimension sara consistent yung pagbasa mo hindi yung may anti may an mayroong anti or t in others okay So in integral calculus, so you will be working on what tool integral. And integral can be indefinite, meaning it is a collection of functions. If you let this y equals f of x plus c, it is a collection of functions. So this is read as integral of f of x dx, and that is equal to f of x plus c. When you say again integral, summing values from one point to another point on an interval summing while differential calculus concern the the concern is more on how fast is a quantity is changing while in integral calculus the concern is measuring all the values from one point to another point on an interval okay summing so definite integral another another integral but in definite integral, you will have a number as a result. Okay? And look at this. It is also defined as limit. So which is consistent with that derivative, which is defined as the limit. So that's why um, calculus is sometimes defined as the study of limits. Okay, guys? So what is the difference between elementary mathematics? So when you say elementary mathematics, we mean pre-calculus. And calculus. What's the difference between pre-calculus and calculus? In pre-calculus, you can talk of a slope of a line like in your analytic geometry. But in calculus, not just a slope of a line. You can talk of the slope of any curve. Whether it is a circle, a parabola, a, a polynomial curve, a rational function. No, you can get the slope at any point on this as long as define the slope nila so using calculus in pre-calculus or elementary mathematics you can talk of tangent line to a circle in calculus you can talk of tangent line to a more general curve not just to a circle okay and in calculus definition of tangent line is precise no unlike in in what in Pre-calculus, like for instance, you can define tangent line to a circle as a line that touches the circle at, at one point. But in calculus, it is what? It is possible for, for the tangent line to intersect the, the curve in more than one point, but can be tangent to, to a curve. Okay? Like for instance, if I have this curve, yeah, and I want it to be tangent here, this point so I, it can be tangent to there to that point but touching the yeah, tangent here but intersecting the curve not just at one point but it can intersect the curve at another point unlike in a circle you can define tangent line as a line that touches the circle at exactly one point but it is not true in any curve a curve can be intersected by a tangent line in more than one point. 
like as I said in this case. No? Is that clear, guys? So you cannot say that a line to a curve, a tangent line to a curve is a curve, I mean, it's a line that touches the curve at exactly one point. It is not true anymore. It is true for circle, but it's not true for, for a general curve. Okay, guys? Is that clear, guys? Yes, Pope. Yeah. So that's the power of calculus. No? Sure. In calculus... So, uh, parang instead of lines and circles, it's more of curves. Yes. Because circle is also a curve. Uh, yeah. In, in, but when you say general curve, it's not just circle. Actually, straight line... Do you know that straight line is also a curve? Was it mentioned to you in, in analytic geometry that a straight line is also a curve, guys? No, po. That's because pretty new. straight line is a member of the algebra, family of algebraic curves. A straight line is a member of the family of algebraic curves. It is the simplest member in the family of algebraic curves. So although when we say curve generally, we mean something that is bent, but the analytic definition of, or mathematical definition of curve is that it is simply a path traced by a moving point according to a given law or condition. So if the path traced by a moving point is such that it moves so that for every movement of the point, the slope is constant. So it is what? It is now a straight line. And that path is a curve, the simplest member in the family of algebraic curves. May mga simple pa, pero ang simplest is a straight line. Kaya tinatawag ng straight line, not, not anymore curve. Pero siya yung siya isang curve pa rin, okay? Circle, mga special, ano nila yung curve? Algebra curve, circle, for conic sections. So let's proceed. In calculus, I mean in pre-calculus or elementary mathematics, you can talk of area of a region bounded by line segments like polygon, no? O kaya yung mga basic uh, shapes like circle. O, pero kung mga bounded by 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 line segments, mga polygon in general, you can find the area. But in calculus, even the area of this region, look at the region. Did, do you see the region on the left side, guys? So you have an or orange curve. Guys? Yung shaded area. You can see. Yes. So actually, this shaded area is represented by this definite integral. This indefinite integral, you will come up with a number if it is positive, it represents the area of this region. Let's say after evaluation, the integral, the definite integral, you come up with 10. It means the region, this region, has an area 10. If you mean it, area. But if this orange represents profit function, so this region represents what? Represents profit. Can be, let's say, 10,000. Can be 12,000 and so on the number that you will get out of this definite integral represents the profit, the amount, okay? Now, in case it becomes negative, it can be interpreted, interpreted if it's still profit, loss. So instead of you gain, you lost. Let's say you, it becomes 12,000, negative $12,000. It means only that the negative sign is a loss instead of having a profit. Is that clear, guys? Yes, well. So again, in calculus, instead of just area of lines bounded by line segments, you can calculate the region like this, eh? like on the right side. You can get exactly the area of such. In calculus, you can get the length of a line segment, distance between two points. In calculus, you can get the length, or look at the orange. I can get the length of this curve from this point at x equals a to the point at x equals b. Once you stretch that, what is the length? Calculus can solve the length. Even it's not what? It's not a straight line. Length of a general curve. In calculus, you can compute for the volume of a rectangular solid. I mean, in elementary mathematics. But in calculus, you can compute for the volume of solid bounded by surfaces, not just by planes. Motion along a, a straight line with constant velocity. In calculus, even the velocity is varying. Work done by a constant force. In calculus, even the work 
done by by a varying force possible you can compute mass of an object with constant density mass of an object with a varying density in calculus you can work on that center of a sphere what is the center of a sphere of course the one that is at the middle of the figure but in calculus you can get the center of gravity of a more general solid not just the and even the center of the geometric figure even the solid is not regular so that's the power of calculus and of course there are so many more especially applied ones calculus very powerful in solving many problems you want to get the maximum value the minimum value sa quadratic function you can get algebraically the maximum and the minimum by solving for the vertex right you can get the maximum value or the minimum value depending on whether it is opening upward you can get the minimum opening downward what if you have you can get the maximum what if your curve is no longer parabola higher curves no so you can get the area here professor question lampo so can calculus also do what's all on the left side bow what elementary mathematics can do sorry again uh, pa, kumbaga po, uh, can calculus do what's also presented on the left side yes on, oh, but okay unlike po. on the left limited to this only but in calculus mm. generalized okay pa, thank you but of course you don't need to do to do the calculus on the left side because that can be done by basic math so even you're in basic math, you can do the left side, but the right side, not possible. Perhaps you can approximate only using the left side, but on the right side, you can get exactly the exact values. Okay? Okay, but thank you, sir. So that's the power of calculus. 